Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we have something very special here. It's a Tayan S2466 motherboard. It's a dual socket A motherboard. So we have uh, two socket 462 here with two Athlon MP2000 Plus CPUs. So those are basically identical to Athlon XP2000 Plus. So 1.67 GHz, 256K up L2 cache, Palomino core. And uh, it uses the AMD 760MPX chipset, so we got 4x AGP, got two full length, length PCI slots, so they're not PCI-X, they're full length PCI, 64 bit, 66 MHz, we got four 32 bit, half length, 33 MHz PCI slots, we got four slots for PC2100 DDR, so that's 266 MHz. It can use ECC reg, so that's buffered memory, up to 4 GB. We got a couple of ATA100 ID connectors here and a floppy. Up here we have the ATX connector. We got a Movilex and a 4 pin power. And as far as I know, one of the CPU will use the 5 volt rail, and one will use the 12 volt rail. So you can either use the ATX plus a Movilex. Or you can use the 8x plus the 4 pin, which you find in your more modern system. You can technically use all three, but they're not necessary. Uh, Molex is more for power supply that lacks this connector, but most power supplies today have one, so obviously. So, what I'm gonna use is this one plus that one. And if you use this one, the manual clearly states do not connect anything to that cable, it could cause instability. So, no hard drives, no nothing on that. You need to have a dedicated. Molex uh, harness for, for from the power supply if you use that. <coughs> now I'm not sure when this board was made. Early revisions have a bug in the south bridge, I think it is, for USB. So it has two USB ports over here and a header somewhere around probably here. Uh, it says QC03 on it. And some time around 2002 the boards had a fixed south bridge. So USB should work, so I think this will work on this board. Also, there's no sound on this board, and uh, I, as far as I know, the Sunblast Live didn't like SMP, the drivers didn't really support that, so they're kind of buggy. They seem to fix that with later RDU2 drivers. So, some people didn't use any sound card with these. There's an onboard 100 megabit 3 com controller here. So, yeah. And I want to recap this board. I have a couple of time boards before DualSocket 940, so basically what came out like a year after this. And uh, all of those died. Bad, the cap started swelling, leaking. They died within like three and a half years at the most. Uh, did replace some caps on those back in the day when they were new. But yeah, none of them uh, had caps that lasted a very long past, past three years. So. I would like to recap this because uh, to me this is a really special board. I wanted my collection. I want it to be fully serviced, have good caps. So I bought some nice Philips uh, low ESR caps. It even says low ESR, low ESR on some of these here, actually marked with that. So the plan is to do a full recap and it actually wasn't that expensive, about 40 euros for this. So. Uh, Compared to some single socket so, uh, board I done with socket day, I paid up to 70 euros sometimes for caps because they had a stupid amount of caps. So I think I did one with 65 caps in a compact. It just uh, ended up really expensive. This one doesn't have much of any small caps. I got big ones and medium ones, so I bought a whole set for this board. So yeah, the plan is to recap this and build a system on this later. So there will be a build video too. So this is just uh, the video for servicing the board. And we're gonna do some post testing, obviously. I know this post right now. I don't have matching coolers though, but that is on its way. So hopefully I get that like a few days from now. After this is recap, so we can, I can test it, edit that into the video. So yeah, let's get to some recapping of this board. So I had to get my board heater out because uh, there's a lot of 
Mm. Uh, the, the copper planes in, are in, like in the middle here, it seems, and they're really tough to get some heating to to get the caps out. I mean, get the holes clean is even harder, so. The caps are falling out on the board heater due to gravity. And then ha they have to be removed so they don't uh, boil on the board heater. The board is liberated from the old caps. They were uh, quite difficult to get out. From all the socket A boards I've done, this was the hardest to do. I had to use my board heater to get it up to 90C or so. There was a chance to get them out and if nothing else to clean the holes. There's a lot of copper in this board on both sides and in the middle. So. Yeah, just a soldering iron won't work. So some form of hot air or a board heater is more or less required if you want to do a board like this or this board. So next to do is put in a lot of new caps. And here on the screen you can see the board and the cap list. So you can freeze here if you want to take a screenshot. If you want to recap this board, you have uh, the values here, if you don't want to do a list yourself. But it could always be worth double checking. I've seen the same board from Thai and use different values. So, always worth double checking. So, there is a circle where the negative one is and the one without there is a plus sign. And it's also on my image. And some of these don't go the same way, they point the other way, share ground on the, like in between. So make sure you don't put the, these two over here the same way, because they are mirrored. So the board is nice and clean now, 
so I can mount a heatsink and a couple of CPUs and some temporary heatsinks on that because I still don't have the new ones but I want to test it obviously so let's do that so I have hooked up a couple of coolers RAM got the 9800 Pro here an Ice Q 256 megabyte model also got a SATA card over here for some testing already checked that the board posted I forgot the film and uh, I had some VGA issues but that was uh, Basically, the AGP slot doesn't have a hook, so it's quite easy for the car to move up a bit at the back here. So I had to try to figure that out, but once I did that, uh, I forgot to film it. So it does work, it does post. So I did some BIOS configuration and some initial testing just to make sure it's fine. But we're gonna post it anyway, see what you can see here. So, like I said, there's a SATA card over here. <coughs> I actually wanted a SCSI card, but uh, well, you can see this blower here. It gets completely covered up by all the SCSI cards I tried, like the elliptic one, so it's that's not viable. And uh, I can't obviously use a 32 bit one, but this one is only partially obstructing the fan, so it doesn't seem to make a difference. So let's power this thing on. Power, power. So. Let's see, this is gonna take quite some time to post because I have ECC enabled. And I read on the internet it takes about two minutes for it to post, and it's kind of true, it takes one minute 17 seconds. So I'm gonna fast for forward here. So we're posting, and yeah, and there's the SIL card, a Tuppy DVD detected. So you can only see that this CPU type, you can't see both of them, but it said two in the beginning. And I have nothing to boot, so it, try, it wants to try to boot from the network card onboard one, and this doesn't seem to be a way around that. So we're in the BIOS here, and uh, it's not much to see here really. They uh, disabled the floppy because it was on by default and compliant. Uh, uh, yeah, and we have two gigs of RAM at the bottom there. Um, let's see. USB controller is enabled, it was disabled by default. And the port works, so the USB port works, that's nice. So this is the later revision board with a less buggy chipset. Advanced chipset. This is all your like AGP and memory related stuff. So I turn on ECC. That's why it takes so long to boot. But I want ECC because the memory are, are ECC memories and they're buffered. And having four in some channel is asking for trouble if you run ordinary plain DDR. This board officially only supports two sticks of normal memory without ECC and buffering. And I have run three sticks of this speed in consumer boards, and that requires an overvolting to be stable at all. So, yeah, having four sticks really, you really need server grade RAM with the features enabled, I think. Uh, yeah, IQ stuff and so on. Uh, disable all the you know, COM ports. So, yeah, and hardware monitoring, but I don't trust the CPU temps. One is definitely hot than the other because of the much smaller heat sink and fan but yeah voltages look good and see here boot here we can uh, boot with adding card cassette and down here is the no oh, there is the uh, dvd to the sil card the card over here sata 2 pci x 133 card so it runs about half its rate of speed now should do it's about a half a gigabyte per second and a port can do 275 megabytes per second in theory then so we can use off the shelf SSDs and SSDs and hard drives and more, uh, even a brand new Blu-ray player if we wanted to so that's kind of nice. Uh, all my SCSI cards that fit that slot completely box the, the uh, cooler so that's no go. So we're booting Yanto here. 
because uh, I didn't get that uh, mem test this to work, but apparently it was the, didn't like the disk. Well, maybe was a two new version of uh, mem test. I can try an older version later. See if this works here. Yeah. So we have two gigs of RAM. So yeah, that's nice. And uh, let's check the CPUs. Cat proc CPU info should spew out two CPUs here. Athlon MP2000 Plus. The second one just says Athlon processor. Don't know why they say different. Doesn't say what kind of Athlon that is. Could be something with the BIOS how it's identified. I think both are MPs because the one I read on is an MP. And, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna um, double check that when I replace the coolers once they arrive. But we have two processors and they are the same spec so it doesn't really matter as long as it works. Mm, we can run top with this like task manager for Windows. Uh, see what it's doing. So we've got 2022 megs total of RAM, uh, almost 1.8 gig free, 36 megs used, 225 megs of buffers and cache, and top is the most demanding thing we're doing right now. So yeah, we could hook up an SSD to this and benchmark on that SATA card just for the fun of it and see what that does because I think that would be fun, because then we can get an idea of how fast that SATA card is on this board. So let's go halt here and do that. So we have partitions, I can see. SD here, F-disk, SD, print, yeah, Windows. So there is Windows on this thing, apparently. I don't... I actually don't know what kind of Windows that is. Anyways, we could uh, benchmark it if we're supposed to. This isn't a particularly good benchmark, but this gives us like a, an idea of the theoretical maximum speed uh, of this device. Maybe I'm benchmarking my optical unit. <coughs> Oh no, nope. I think that is the SATA device. Yeah, obviously it is because we have checked it. So that, that's like SATA 1 speeds, but that could be due to a number of things. I'm pretty sure that uh, SSD isn't SATA 1. <laughs> I don't even know if there were any SATA 1 SSDs. Uh, it can also be the control card just can't go past that on the porch, or it could simply be that the uh, the chipset on the motherboard just doesn't allow for much more in this particular use case. So, but that's more than you would get from uh, a SIL card uh, or any SATA card on an ordinary 32-bit PCI slot, assuming 32 mirrors. The technically 66 exists, and uh, a lot of control cards can do that on 32 bits. F length PCI, but most motherboards like rarely has 66 megabit support, so this is already faster than an ordinary PCI slot, so that's an improvement. So, yeah, that, that's for Windows 2000 or even XP would be really fast anyway. Fifty-one. That's cached read, so that usually always run a bit faster. So yeah, 
I think that's it for uh, this time. This is gonna be part one with the, this motherboard. In part two, I want to build the actual system, and the uh, only thing stopping me right now is the heat sinks. I don't want to put the board in before I have those. So, yeah, thank you for watching, and have a nice day. Ha! If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage, braindrainlan.tk, and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.